are once again live. This is the finals for the fourth stop of the GoPro IBA World Tour. This is the Ita Cochata Pro presented by Pride Bodyboards as well as Net and uh, Komodo Surf Shop. Jared Houston next to myself, Eric Apple. He's the, one of the most amazing bodyboarders to ever come out of South Africa, and we're pumped to have him here in the booth with me for a great final, Jared. Yeah, man. I can't wait. It's a great lineup, and yeah, I'm just so pumped to watch it go down from the booth. Again, 40-minute heat. Best two waves still count, correct? Yeah. 40-minute yeah. heat, two world champions, Amori Laverne and Jeff Hubbard, ready to rock you guys. Again, this has been coming a long, long time. We've been here for well over a week and a half, and uh, man, great beach break, heavy waves coming in, and these guys are really going to put on a show for us. Yeah, man, I can't wait, Eric. It's like, yeah, like you said, two world champions. I mean, these guys are putting themselves back in the, um, in the race for the, for the world title right now. I mean, this is a pretty... Uh, it's a pretty critical heat, Eric. 100%. It's critical. <laughs> Again, uh, we're gonna have we're gonna get you the uh, point summary here in just a minute, and we'll give you both situations. We'll let you know what happens if Amori wins, and we'll let you know what happens if Jeff Hubbard wins. But man, uh, Ben Player with that big win in Arika pulled out and away from everybody because uh, Hubby and Amori lost out relatively early in that yeah. contest. But man, we are going to see uh, a big change in the points race because. Both these guys are going to be right back up there, especially considering Amori already has a win this year. Exactly, exactly. I think this is going to fare way very well for Amori if he can if he can come out on top of this one. But I mean, uh, up against a competitor like Jeff Hubbard, it's you know it's it's never over until the final second. So it's going to be a very exciting final and uh, by far the, the the biggest the biggest heat of the event, most exciting one. Again, just to let you know how we got here, uh, starting off today, uh, our first quarter final was Ian Campbell and Amore Laverne. Amore took him out. Second one was Nicholas Bastos taking out Eddie Luciano. Third quarter final, we saw Jeff Hubbard take out the Chileno, Alon Munoz, who's been doing very, very well. He, we, I was happy to see him make the quarterfinals after, you know, he, he seemed like he got so nervous and had a lot of pressure uh, on his back in Chile. And in the fourth quarter final, Dudu Pedro took out Lucas Noguera, the uh, trials winner. And then in our semi, Amore Laverne beat Nicholas Bastos, and Jeff Hubbard took out our wild card rider, Duda Pedra. But great to see Duda make the semifinals yeah. as a wild card. Incredible, incredible. I mean, uh, yeah, like we were saying before, local guy, post boy for the event, and uh, just all around legend. So huge congrats to Duda, huge congrats to Nicholas Bastos, and uh, all the quarterfinalists as well. You guys, you guys have been ripping. And yeah. uh, now we have the, uh, the, the two last men standing Amore Laverne and Jeff Hubbard. Amore being from Reunion and Jeff and Wise are both island boys. Both island boys down here competing in Brazil. And uh, yeah, let's, let's see how it all goes down. I think, we, I think we're definitely going to experience the best conditions of the day right now, Eric, where the tide's dropping out pretty quickly. Um, the waves will be breaking a bit further back on the beach. And um, I mean, the, the crowd is right there next to the water's edge. Huge vibe down the beach. And it uh, looks like we might have a bit of interest to the right of the screen with uh, Jeff Hubbard, but unfortunately pulling back off that one. So not a wave yet caught here. Let's see if we can get this score summary updated right now. We have a little iPad up here that uh, gives all of our scores. And I don't have anything coming through. What's going on? OK, here we go. It is updated. So again, four minutes through this heat, no waves have been ridden yet. Yeah, that's yeah, it's, uh, that's the thing about the finals. You know, like everyone's everyone's been keeping busy the whole event, getting started real early, trying to get as many ways as they can to get through these heats. But now that they're in the final, they know it's going to take something big to take the win, and they're really going to. I think we're going to see a lot of waiting in this heat, a lot of um, I think wave wave selection is going to come into it in a big way. And now we've got two of the smartest guys in the business out here. I mean, Amari Laverne and Jeff Harvard are both renowned for their wave selection ability. So it's, uh, this really is going to be one of the craziest heats of the, of, the, of the events, and maybe even the year. Yeah, for sure. Just a full clash of the Titans right here. And again, um, Amori's really been picking off the lefts. Hubby's been going both directions. Yeah. Uh, but Amori is definitely, definitely wanting those lefts more than uh, the rights. Yeah, I think he's onto a good thing. Eh? From what I've seen, it looks like the lefts have got uh, quite high scoring potential. They seem to, with the predominant soil direction here at Coachella, they seem to break down the beach a bit more, uh, offering a longer ride and a bit more face to work with. Whereas um, Jeff's been kind of looking for the shorter, punchier rides that allow the quick, heavy barrel with a move out, which the judges are loving too. So 
it's, uh, it's just really going to be interesting. You know, we're seeing two opposing heat strategies, and it uh, looks like we have the first man out of the gate here. That's right, in red, on the left, Amore Laverne. We knew he liked these waves. Big roll right there with the white water exploding all wow. over. Look at that. That was awesome. That was great control from Ray Laverne. A big wave. First wave of the heat. Really strong bottom turn. Um, can't wait to see a replay of that one. Uh, there's a lot of whitewash on that wave, but he really projected out in front of it. It came out really cleanly. Look at this paddling. Yeah, Very pa smooth. Handling those bounces real well. Yeah, exactly. You know, like he's, he's, yeah, he handles the bounce really well. Times that really perfectly. He gets a little bit, disappears in the phone there, but comes out so quickly. Um, yeah, just, he's just really <laughs> firm on his board. You know, he knows exactly when to turn, when not to. And uh, his rail control getting after that lip was, uh, was nothing short of spectacular. 100%. So now we got Jeff patiently waiting his first ride um, while we're waiting for those first waves. 6.13 for Amore. That's a great score to start it off, right? Yeah, awesome score to start off with. I mean, it's in the, it's in, it's in the good, to, good to great range, and uh, yeah, he's definitely going to be happy with that one. Um, looks like another small wave coming through down the beach here, but yeah. going unridden. So again, you guys, you can interact with myself and Jared here on the IBA World Tour Facebook page. If you haven't already liked it, you need to like it. Share it. Get us some more likes. We just hit a big goal the other day of 50,000 likes, and we're pumped. Thanks for all your wow. support. Yeah, that's huge, eh? Like, yeah, the, like I mean, the, the, the Facebook page is such an awesome way to interact with, with the guys and uh, with the riders as well and, uh, and Apple and, and, and everyone here during the webcast. And, and also just it seems like you can win a fair bit of gear off the IBA Facebook page as well by sure. liking and sharing and and whatnot, so it's definitely something worthwhile to get involved in. 100%. We see our crew out there filming with their GoPros. Remember, GoPro is your title sponsor here, the GoPro IBA World Tour. Definitely been using our cameras to get so much great content. Yeah. Uh, both on the riders and with the photographers. Also, we want to thank Pride Bodyboards as well as Komodo Surf Shop and Net for helping to make this event possible. Yeah. I'll definitely throw out another quick... Plug there to Pride Bodyboards, my personal sponsor, and uh, love your shirt here, Eric. You, you're looking great. Have to get you on a Pride Board soon, <laughs> man. I'm ready. Send me one. Yeah. Well, you heard that. I'm sure the Pride Boys heard that. Who, who distributes it in the U.S.? Um, in the U.S., wow, that's, I've only just signed on with them, but um, they do have a pretty good distributor in the U.S. It might actually be the guys themselves from, from France that are handle it. Handle it. But, um, yeah, it would be great if we could get someone to confirm that. I want a big 42.5 or a 43 one. Yeah, man. Well, we, we, I'm sure we can wrestle something out from you. No, yeah, Mars having a little paddle there, but unfortunately not, not much coming out of that one. But look at this little left shape yeah. here, over here. Looks like oh, man, Hubby is in position. Yeah. And he is up. He's got a lot of speed, Jeff, as always. Nice wow. invert. Wow, look at that explosion. That was a great opening wave for Jeff. That was a legit I mean, whitewater explosion right there on his opening wave, like you said, Jared. Yeah, exactly. I mean, great projection. You can see how he just, he looks so light on his board. Um, he is pretty light. I think he only weighs about 65 kilograms, which is nothing. And I mean, there he is. He just times it so perfectly. Boom. Stock standard Jeff Hubbard invert. And uh, into the flats, rides it out cleanly. So uh, that's only the second wave ridden in the heat. And um, you guys compare that to a Mario Laverne's wave. I think that uh, Jeff's might get the upper hand, but uh, let's, let's see what the judges have to say. But uh, Jeff's looking really comfortable on his new boards, and um, yeah, he just he flew through that one, you know? Yeah, for sure. Let's see if uh, we get a score here coming through. Yeah. That's it. 7.13, a big score there for Hubby on his first wave. So, man, both these guys are just showing you why they're world champions, huh? Yeah, exactly. You know, like um, <coughs> Jeff's so calculated. Look at this set, Amore Laverne in the red. This is a quite a big wave, isn't it, Jared? Wow, this is. This is one of the bigger waves of the day. He's drawing a really good lineup. It looks like he's going to get a pretty clean section oh. here. Oh, man, is he going to pop out of it? Oh, oh. you see him just yeah, explode that's, out the back. That's from the that's the lip landing. Goes straight through the water, hits the sand, and shoots back up. And I mean, you can see that that literally shot him out the back of that. So it's pretty heavy out there. You got a this bit of risk to get hurt. But here we got another look at. I mean. Great, great line in that wave. Unfortunately, just it kind of breaks a little bit too early. Rolls under the lip, and to me, it looked like he came down a bit too vertical. Almost came down into a bit of a nosedive. 
Yeah, for sure. Okay, let's take a look at the replay of this. Oh, we're not going to do it. 1.88 coming in for Amore on that last wave, so it's not going to be something he's going to take home. Again, we have a lot of time. 30 minutes still to go. We're 25% uh, through this final. Two world champions here. Yeah. Well, yeah, while that 1.88 is definitely not saying that Moz is uh, happy to have in his score sheet, it was enough to get him back in the first, so <laughs> he's got to be feeling at least a little bit good f about that. I mean, Jeff needs next to nothing to go back into, into, uh, into first place. He just needs to pretty much take off on a wave. But, um, yeah, we, we just hit under 30 minutes, which is pretty much like the start of a normal heat. And by this stage, you've already got guys with some pretty solid scores on their on their sheets, so it's um it's going to be a pretty entertaining final, guys. I'm, just, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually reading up on Hubbard's Wikipedia page. Oh no way! Yeah, it's 2006, 2009 were his first two world championships. Of course, he's the current world champion here in the IBA. Yeah. Yeah, it's I mean, I, I was I was there at the last year's Fronton Contest, and it was um just amazing the energy and the just how just how tight that title race was, you know, you, at the beginning of this stage of the year last year, you really thought Dave Winchester had it, you know, he was miles ahead of everyone, pretty much a, pretty much a whole event's points in front of everyone. And yep. uh, Jeff Hubbard just slowly clawed his way back into a winning position and come front on, he was the one to, was the one to lay claim to his third world title and that makes him the current world champion. So huge hats off to Jeff. Looks like we had a couple of bumps in the horizon out there. Let's hope they're coming in the good direction. I guess that's pretty much the most important thing here in Ida Corchado is just a, the correct mix of sandbanks and direction of the swell because there's never any shortage of swell here. It's always something to ride. But it's just a case of whether or not the sand is lined up well enough. Yeah, for sure. Check out that fisherman up on the rocks. Yeah. <laughs> Look so at this. Oh, that's a body surfer paddling down there. Yeah. Not a body's having contest, bro. But um, yeah, that how's it? It's pretty crazy how the guys actually they catch a fish and drag the poor thing all the way up those rocks. It's pretty much scaled by the time it gets to them. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, remember 8.0801 right now for Amore Lower and 7.13 for Jeff, but he only has one wave. Uh, some comments coming through. Graham Messina is loving it, says we rule. And uh, Seth Carter says, worst set up for in Houston. You're a legend. You should be in this final. Oh, man, I'd love to be, but it just didn't happen to be this event. Just wasn't in the cards this time. Nah, I'm it just wasn't on the cards, eh? <laughs> but hopefully, hopefully, my, hopefully my luck turns soon. <laughs> but, uh, wow, we have uh, James watching from London. Great job on the live feed. Awesome. I've got to get to London soon. I'd love to go check that place out. Um, are you going to go do some of the medical tests all the South Africans oh, are famous for? Yeah, no, As I we see know. Hubby in the yellow. Yeah, so Jeff Hubbard in the yellow. Up on a pretty nice looking wave, a lot of speed. He's looking to do something pretty oh. big here. Wow, another sick invert. Like, projects so clean into the flats. Um, can you hold on to that one? I mean, he landed pretty clean in front of it. It's, uh, yeah, I'm going to be interested to see how the judges saw that one. You know, he had control, but the wave caught after him very quickly. So we're going to have another look at it. So, yeah, very wedgy wave. A lot of whitewash on that, but I mean, he just times it so well again. Just glides off that lip. Good tweak. He's really far in front of the flats. Big bounce. And that green board looking good, huh? The green board looks really, really good. So, oh. Mario oh, Mori on a good size right here. Looking for some speed. Gets a little bounce, though. Doesn't like that one. Yeah, yeah. That was a bit of a, bit of a wonky one for Mars. I mean, I could see what he saw going on it, but uh, he definitely made a good decision to get out of that as opposed to trying to milk it for what, it for what it wasn't. Now he's on his way back out there pretty quick. But here we've got another look at Jeff Hubbard's wave. Seems like there's a judge that's taking pretty long to drop a score here. Good invert though, though. I mean, and as we've seen, usually when they take a long time, it's because they're giving it a good score. Yeah, generally giving it a good score. And although in this case, I think they might be disputing whether or not it was complete. Because it was, it was very quick. Very, very quick. So I think that's why they're watching it quite a few times to try and, um, try and gauge what kind of score they can give to that, which is... One of the great developments in judging at the moment is they have access to these live replays. Yeah. As they should. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm all for it. I think the judges have done a great job so far in this event. 
So yeah, so, we, so we're still waiting for that score to drop. Uh, Mars is, uh, you can see he's getting a bit antsy. So yeah. a 2.63 coming for Hub on that wave. Yeah, so yeah, the judges obviously deemed it incomplete. I think they awarded slightly higher um, points because it was uh, very clean, very stylish and, and controlled, but unfortunately didn't stay ahead of the whitewash for long enough. So um, they didn't deem that one complete. I think that they made a, a fair call on that one. And um, yeah, we got, uh, so... Jeff has gone back into the lead, though, that, with that 2.63. Yeah, for sure. So, again, 24 minutes to go. We have 15 minutes away. 9.76 the total score for Jeff Hubbard and Maury with 8.01. Both these guys are looking to, to uh, get rid of some scores, though. Jeff is still carrying a 2.63 he's going to get rid of. Amore is still carrying a 1.88. He's going to get rid of that as well. Yeah. So, there you have it, boys. It's, it's uh, yeah, so it's just... Just about to go 24 minutes remaining. So still heaps of time. It's like pretty much a normal heat still remaining. A quick paddle there from Jeff Hubbard, opting out of that one. You can definitely see he's, uh, he's got an eye for the right side here. He knows that. I mean, every barrel that Jeff's got pretty much in this event, I think, has been on a, on a right. Whereas, um, like we saw in the heat before, Mario Laverne really used, utilizing the lefts. I mean, he got an eight point, a high eight score on his opening ride. And uh, he's been cashing on the left big time. So, yeah, there's no perfect formula to, to winning a heat. It's yeah, different for, sure. for everyone. So, I mean, the, the beach is, every time I see it, it's just filling up more and more and more. Yeah, for sure. And then, uh, the people here, the Brasileros here in Rio de Janeiro, especially Ita Cochada, happy to see a great event like this, the GSS bodyboarding event, the fourth stop of the GoPro IBA World Tour. Yeah. Again, 22 minutes and 30 seconds to go here in the finals of the Ita Cachada Pro presented by Pride Bodyboards, Kimono Surf Shop, as well as Net. Man, you see the white water just exploding there. Great event down here, such a powerful beach break. I've had a lot of fun here over the last couple of days, taking out the uh, the GoPro myself and getting some barrel shots. Still waiting for some more waves to come through for these guys to rip up for us. Yeah, for sure. But uh, Jeff's definitely no, sh no stranger to winning here. I mean, he won three events this year last year. And I'm pretty sure he won three, three in the, the year before that. Well, so that's just six event wins in two years. It's some, guys are, some guys have waited their whole last to win an event where he's won. He just wins them down a dozen. It looks like we've got a bit of action in the rip here. Jeff having a look at this one. Hopefully not to take off on that. And talking about the rip, I mean, there, we have a rip here because there's just so much water moving, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the water comes in, comes in up on the uh, north side of the beach and just surges down the beach. When, if you're looking up on the top of Castile, which is the mountain, just to the left of the screen, um, you, can, you can actually see all the rifts that are carved out in the sand from the, from the, from the water wash, washing up and yeah. coming back down. And exactly where those rifts end, there's just streams of rip going out. But that's... 
also something that contributes to the wave quality here is that it actually it actually forms banks on yep. the sand getting pushed back out. So in a heat, you, you're looking to stay just off the edges of the rip, either running into it or running away from it, but those seem to be the best ways of breaking. As we see Hubby taking off on the left, been waiting for a while, and that was not one that he's going to want. Yeah, still plenty of time remaining. I mean, Mods is out of the back. He looks pretty calm and collected like he always does. Bunch of heads filling up the foreground. For sure. Fans are coming out. And man, could you imagine if Dudu would have made the final, the, how the local support here would have been? It would have oh been crazy. My. Just be too crazy, eh? I'm looking at some of the comments on the IBA Facebook page to see some riders paddling. Is Amori looking at this left? He is. Yeah. I mean, look, look at nice fun little mm. left looking like looking like a nice a Try, clean wave. He's getting a bit of stall. speed. Nice ARS there. Wow. That was a really nice ride from Murray Levin. Smaller wave, but um but clean had a lot of had a lot of face in it, allowing him to build up a bit of a line. And uh, that's gonna be a good backup wave for Murray Levin. Man, we got fans from Israel saying hello. Black Magic saying what's big up to Jeff Hubbard, the real air master. Zach McKenzie cheering on Jeff Hubbard as well. Some good interaction from you guys. Keep it coming for myself and Jared Houston as we see this replay of Amore Laverne on a small wave, but a clean ARS nonetheless. Not going to be much more than a five, I would say. Yeah, yeah. They have just dropped there. So you're pretty almost spot on. 5.45, so pretty decent score. Yeah. Yeah, not bad at all. Definitely a good backup. I mean, that's uh, let's put Jeff back a bit. He still doesn't need much at all. I mean, he's just needing a 4.45 there because it's such an attainable score for Jeff Hubbard. So, Amore in the lead. Hubby needs a 4.45 to move up to first place. Over halfway through this heat, we have 18 minutes to go. That's a bit of a rip tearing through the lineup right there now. You can see a lot of white wash. There's just always so much white wash on the inside here. So these guys are just going to be waiting for the cleanest, biggest set waves, trying to get the most speed they can possibly get, and to do the biggest, cleanest move maneuvers out into the flats. That is uh, what the judges are looking for, and that's what's going to—that's going to get—that's what's going to get them the win here, at the Iliquachata Pro. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the scores right now, thinking about it. Amore is a six-one and a five-four. Jeff is a big seven-one and a two-six. So, like I said, he just needs a four-four-five to take the lead. So, that seven-one-three is going to be a strong score to take with him to, into the end of the heat. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Looks like a bit of a lull at the moment out there. Something small approaching here. Let's see what the riders, if anyone takes any interest. Looks like Amari's really tearing across the screen there. He is uh, showing quite a lot of interest for this wave. Look at this. Paddling hard, but not quite getting into it. Yeah. I Just don't think he had priority, though. No. Yeah, he might not have, have had it. Jeff looked pretty relaxed. I mean, I guess he thought, nah, not too much scoring potential on that one. That's the, that's the other thing about being first priority, Eric, is that you... You have to make the decision whether or not to, to, to let second priority go or whether to use it up yourself because, y you know, you, you, you have to make a pretty educated decision because if you let them go and they achieve the score that you could have stopped them from getting, you're really going to be kicking yourself, you know? Yeah, for sure. And I want to say that I, both these guys were uh, congratulating each other on making the finals just before they paddle out. They yeah. were hugging each other and talking. So yeah. it's cool to see these guys. are They're definitely fierce competitors, but they're definitely buddies. Yeah, they're, they're pretty good friends. Eh? Mods and Jeff have traveled together a lot um, in the past, especially in 2011. They're traveling a lot together. So they have a pretty good relationship. And uh, yeah, I wonder if Jeff's, brother's Jeff, Jeff's brother Dave is out there watching. I'm sure he is. He's down somewhere in the south of Chile at the moment. It's got to be cold over there. Yeah. Yeah, apparently Jeff was telling me at dinner last night that Dave's been surfing in two wetsuits. What? Yeah, wearing two steamers. Come on. Because he reckons it's so cold. I mean, uh, I guess mobility would be slightly uh, hindered. But That's other craziness. than that, it's pretty good. So, um... Yeah, a bit of a washy, just a bit of a washy event coming through, a bit of washy wave coming through there on the inside. Um, kind of, kind of, bit, kind of a bit slow, Eric. A bit slow this heat. I think that's a, a lot of that has to, has to do with that rip that's busy tearing out through the peak there. Right yeah, now. Although you can Jeff, see the white water. Look at this wave the hubby's paddling for. Yeah, yeah. This one look looks pretty good. Look at this. 
Bouncing down, but a big size wave. Good section coming at him. Mm, yeah, I just, oh. uh, just went, that one just went too long. You know, he just, he hung back for just too long on that one. And uh, by the time it reached the, by the time it reached the shore, it lost all his power. And Jeff knows that doing a move that close to the shore is just not really worth it. Judges aren't going to, aren't going to like it. It's, um, it's, it's doing, doing the maneuver at the end of the wave just doesn't really count for much with, uh, with these guys. And uh, that's pretty correct. You know, the, the most power is normally located at right at the start of the wave. Yeah, and we actually had Hatto in here, one of, one of our esteemed judges, and he, we talked about this stuff, and he, he pointed out very specifically that the judges are looking for these guys to be doing the maneuvers farther out, yeah. you know, in, in, on uh, where the wave has the most power, not on the inside. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, so, so Mari's now sitting with priority. I mean, Jeff using up his priority in that last wave. Um... It's definitely a good a good decision from Jeff's behalf, I think, to go on that, because um, from Amari's position, I think he would have been in a in a good place to get a good scoring good, to get a good score out of that wave. So Jeff, a pretty tactical decision there from Jeff as well as just wanting to improve his own score. Well, both these guys are world champions, and they are veterans, and they have a lot of experience, of course. And man, these guys are certainly very tactical. Yeah, one hundred percent. These guys know all the rules and how to use them for their advantage. Exactly, exactly. Look at these lamps moving through on the outside. Look at this. Big blue lines. And, uh, yeah, they look like they could come in a left-breaking fashion. So, our reunion Islander, past world champion of Mario Laverne, is, uh, I think he's going to be looking pretty good on these incoming sets. Wow, some real big waves. Looks like they're coming through. I'm ex excited. Always good to finish in the final day, Eric. It's, uh, it's just got a different vibe about it, you know? It's like really feels like the end of the contest. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Mo's patiently waiting out there. He looks like they're both in the rip. Here we come. He's looking like he's looking. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Hub looking to get rid of a low score of 2.63 with pretty much any complete ride. We'll, we'll get rid of that and move him up. Yeah, definitely. Let's see some more comments here. Since 2011, when the IBA incorporated the GSS format to the World Tour, Jeff Hubbard's won five GSS events, more than any other rider. Pipeline, 2011-2012, Zika Tella in 2011-12, and the uh, Encanto Pro Puerto Rico in 2012. Oh, so this, this could be a sixth event. Yeah, this Look guy's this. amazing. Amore Laverne on a good size wave, a lot of speed. Rolling through the, oh, perfect oh, roll. Yeah, perfect. very good roll, very good roll. Solid round, cylindrical, like perfect poise style. Straight into the flats, lands that cleanly. Although Jeff Hubbard. Oh, look at this barrel. Peachy looking one behind him. Um, ARS. Can he ride it out? Yes, he does. Not quite as clean. A more difficult maneuver than a roll, but he rode it out cleaner. Yeah. So we'll see how the judges decide to, uh, to reward that. Again, exactly. we want to thank Steve Jackson for giving us the info on Jeff Hubbard. Steve Jackson, he's just like an encyclopedia for bodyboarding, I swear. He's, he's always got all the, res all the news at his fingertips. Action Jackson? Yeah, Action Jackson. That's the man. I mean, there he is rolling really cleanly through that. I mean, that's, if you were to show someone what a roll is in bodyboarding, you'd probably show them that. Justin <laughs> Edwards wants, wants uh, our camera crew and our uh, esteemed editor and director, Ren, to make sure you're showing more girls in the lulls in between the sets. <laughs> Look at this bottom turn from Hubby. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Like, he, yeah, he makes the most out of this wave. Um, pretty big projected flip, uh, and, and, he, and he does ride out of that one. Uh, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be pretty interesting to see how the judges scored that in comparison to Mari's last wave, which uh, the scores look like they have just dropped for that. Uh, yeah, that looks like it was enough to, to change the situation, Eric. Yeah, I mean, he only needed a, a, a two-something. So he got a 5.45, a decent score on that wave. It probably would have been a little better score if he would have rotated the ARS a little better. Yeah. But nonetheless, a good score, 7-1 and a 5-4. With 10 minutes and 50 seconds ago, Amore Laverne with a 6-1 and a 5-4-5. So Amore yeah. Laverne now needs a 6.46 to move up back into first position. Remember, both these riders are guaranteed a minimum of $4,000 and 1,720 points if they get second. The winner taking home 2,000 points and six grand. Yeah. Oh, look at that set. I was looking at a massive one. Off to not to go. Jeff, have a go to the Hubbies. end of it. Yeah, he's looking. It looks <coughs> a little washy, but... Oh, wow. big roll. All that white water is just nuts with the green board popping out. Uh, just behind it, kind of there. Oh, Mars in a very oh good boy. looking wave. Oh, he's got a flip. Oh, yeah, he you got to be kidding me. Whoa. Oh! 
Wow, that was amazing, Eric. That's gonna be that's gonna be the score he needs to go back into the first place. That was heavy. Yeah, that's one of the biggest flips of the event so far. Big, yeah, massive, massive projection. Lands out cleanly. Set wave. He's pretty stoked. He knows it. If we had a look at Jeff's ones, I mean, Jeff had a bit of a frothy foam monster. Does what he can with it, but unfortunately gets gobbled up there. It's just too much energy behind him, and wasn't able to ride out that one functionally. But um. Rappi, he still throws a little claim out. <laughs> so he's on his way back out. He knows that Mars would have got a good score there. And here we've got a replay of a Mario Laverne's one. Look at this wave. This was insane. Yeah, so he takes it pretty far out, drawing a really good clean line. <gasps> that was so heavy, that big lip. Look at that explosion. Yeah, that was massive. Eh? And he, did, he came out so quickly and so cleanly. He's, he's going to get rewarded for that, Eric. That's going to be a big score for Mars. Waiting for that score to come through. Wow, yeah. this is going to be big. Uh, you know when the judges are taking their sweet time to do it, they're really racking their brains. Nine minutes to go. We're 31 minutes through a 40-minute heat. Remember, two waves count. Two best waves count. We have a steam paddle of judges from all over the world. Brazil, Portugal, Australia, Brazil, South Africa. The, the world is well represented yeah. on our judging panel. It is, most definitely is. Though. They're doing a great job with that. <coughs> okay. Wow. Look at that. 8.63 for Amore. Wow. That's, that's, I think that might actually be the highest score of the day, Eric, if I'm not mistaken. I think it is. The highest scoring wave of the day for Amore Laverne in the finals, peaking at the right time. And Wait. Here's a replay of it. That's wow, a legit look at that. thick lip, right? Yeah, and he's just hanging on by an like even less than a centimeter of rail, I'd say. He's just attached to it, backflips perfectly, lands super cleanly and solidly, and uh, that's a very just score for a very powerful maneuver. And um, yeah, that's catapulted Mars straight into the lead, and he's, he's looking strong, he's looking strong. You know, he's, there's eight minutes left. Oh, it looks like Jeff had a, had a wave there in yeah. the, amongst the confusion, which, uh, yeah, threads a nice little barrel. barrel. Well, Thumbs Jeff up. only needs a 7.64. Mm, he might have got Jeez. that. 6.43, so it wasn't it. So still, Jeff Hubbard, he needs a 7.64 with 7 minutes and 40 seconds to go, and it's getting tight. Yeah. Wow, this is, this is, this is tight, Eric. This is really, really tight. You know, 7.64 is nothing for Jeff Hubbard. Jeez. You know? For any other rider, that's, that's, a, that's a solid score to chase in these conditions. But, you know, Jeff... Jeff's been getting these scores all event, and uh, it's definitely not over. But, uh, you know, Amari Laverne's, uh, he'd be feeling pretty good right now. 8.63, highest Oof. score of, of, the, of the day so far, I think, and in the final. What a better time to get it. Want to say what's up to Tomas in Reunion Island from the IBA. Give us a big what's up on the IBA Facebook page. Like that page and share it, you guys. We need to get up to 100,000 likes. That's the next step. Yeah. Is that Tom Thomas himself? Yeah, Tom yep. Thomas. He's a bit of a ledge. I've uh, met him when I was over in Reunion a couple of years ago. And uh, yeah, he's always looking after the boys. And yeah, he's a great representation for the IBA over in Reunion Island. And uh, I bet they're just frothing, you know, for Mars. It's been, uh, it's been two long years since he was um, last world champion. Yep. And uh, oh, he could be back up at the top at the end of this year. Who knows? Well, with... Uh Events like South Coast Crusade, yeah, and this one right here in his pocket, he's looking good moving he's forward. That's for sure. He's looking very, very strong. And uh, Mari's actually based in Canary Islands at his new home break. is pretty much front on. So if that event, that, that if it does go down to the last event, then Mars is uh, he'd be looking he'd be looking pretty strong to to take it out. Six minutes left. Six minutes left. Wow, man. This is the first final I've ever watched in the booth, and <laughs> it's pretty nerve-wracking. It's tense, isn't yeah. it? It's very intense, because, you know, you know, when you're down on the beach, you, you're always pulling for someone. You're always you're so immersed in it. Where up here, you kind of get a much clearer perspective of what's going on and just who's taking the right waves. And, yeah, it's just you up here watching the scores. So, it's, it's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty amazed. <laughs> and... At the moment, I still just can't pick it. I want to say Ma Amari's running away with it, but he's, you can't count out this man right here, Jeff Havard. He's, he's just too consistent. Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a three-time world champion for a reason. 
Exactly. 7.64 is what he needs. I mean, man, a good solid barrel and wow. one maneuver as he gets caught inside of there. But a good solid barrel and one maneuver is all it will take. Yeah, that's that's a pretty big way of that one then. Just caught Jeff inside. 7.64, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just fractionally higher than his opening wave of 7.13, so if you can maybe get a little barrel and com combine it with another good high-flying invert into the flats, that, that could be what he needs. Or he just needs to be Jeff Hubbard and just do the most psychotic air we've seen in our lives, and that will get him to where he needs to be as well. I wonder if um, Amari's, uh, Amari's fiance, Maleni, is watching from the Canary Islands. Oh, she's uh, got to be. Yeah, she's, she's, um, she'd be loving this. I mean, uh, she's so supportive of Amari, always coming with him to the events. And I bet she's bummed she missed this one. But um, yeah, Maleni, I'm sure Mars is uh, feeling your support. Ooh, For bit sure. of a Look at this. In the action there. Oh, great barrel there for Mars. Wow. Do you know why his nickname is Mars? I don't know. I guess it's just a short, short from, um, I don't know. Do you know? I'm asking. Yeah, I guess it's just short for Murray. I remember when, during his first world title years, he was, they were saying, can't stop the Mars. Look at this cross oh, over here. Oh, went right. Look wow. at this. Hub just no. getting, oh. Oh, not coming Ooh, out wow, of that Wow, that could have been a big score. And that was critical. That's what, those are the ones that Jeff's been cashing in on all events. Those and the right short, slabby rights. And the way Jeff... It's like he rides a pretty wide board, big for for how little he is. Yeah. It seems like he floats so he's so much like he doesn't sink in the wave. He's like no, on he top, yeah. really trimming faster than the other guys. Skins and his boards are yeah. like paper thin. Like like for the amount of airs this guy does, you'd think he'd be riding a pretty thick board, you know. But his boards are thinner than any other riders, and um, it just cuts into the wave so nicely. But he say we're really getting to the business end of this uh, final, Eric. Ooh. Well, I still want to get to the business end of my pride bodyboard being sent to me. Oh, right. <laughs> and I hope I haven't, uh, I hope I haven't put any um, expectations on the boys, but I'm sure that they would love to have you <laughs> riding something like that. And uh, I'd definitely be stoked to see you ri riding one of my boards when they're available in August. I'm telling you what, I want to go home and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look into putting together an uh, event at the Wedge. I think we should, we should have a special event at the That'd Wedge be pretty cool, in, in Orange man. County. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, it'd be amazing. You know, like, I mean, the Wedge is... Such an iconic wave in across all wave riding sports, you know. And, uh, yeah. I've never surfed it, but I would. Um, I mean, with me being based over there in Puerto Rico, now, I'm definitely planning coming over and having a crack at it. Yeah. It looks crazy, man. It's fun. Uh, Philip Covier says, "Go Maz, go Maz." A lot of people cheering on the Maz. Zach McKenzie cheering for Jeff. Javier Delgado pumped on Puerto Rico. Yeah, Javier Delgado, he's a, he's, a, he's a legend from Puerto Rico. He's always helping out with the Encanto event as well. And um, hopefully I get to share some waves with him next week. But, um, yeah, Eric, the time's really winding down, yeah? You look like you're in the mood to party already. I'm just listening to Pharrell on the music on the beach. Sounding good. <laughs> a ball night to get lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> One minute, 44 seconds. We're having a good time on the beach. We're having a good time here in the commentary booth as well. And look at this. Here's a set wave. Wow. Amari Levan. Jeez, he's looking onto a good one here. Oh, foam ball ride. He's oh. coming out. No, he didn't. Did you see that little setup he did there? I think he might have lost a bit of speed on that one. Oh, that was critical. You know, like he used that priority there. That's just left Jeff Hubbard at the back with priority with one minute and 15 seconds to go. Needing a 7.43. It's this is this is wide open. This is this is as good as it gets. This is as good as it gets. Oh, can almost Man. Not, can almost not watch this here. Okay, so look, if Jeff Hubbard wins this event, he comes back. He will be in first place in the tour. Uh, let's see. And if uh, if Amori wins. Ben Player will still be in first place on the tour. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hold on. If Jeff wins this, Ben Player will still be in first place with 5,000 points. Okay. And uh, Jeff will be in second place with 4,940 points. Okay. And Amori will be in third with, uh, it looks like, 4,720, 4,720 points. Okay. If Moz wins, Ben Player is still in first place. Yeah. But Jeff Hubbard will be in second with 4,660 
Okay, he'll be tied. He'll be tied. Okay. Yeah, he'll be tied. So, Warren wow. will be tied for first place if he wins this. T turn around. Jeff Hubbard. Wow. Oh, he's, he's looking on that one. Ten seconds to go. <laughs> That's it. Amore Laverne is your champion, wow. and he is tied for the lead here at the fourth That's stop amazing. of the GoPro IBA World Tour. Wow, We just man. got this handed to me as the event was ending. Great event for Amore Laverne. His second win of the year. Yeah. Man. That is That's some incredible. good stuff right there. Ben Player with two wins. He won at Pipe. Yeah. And he won at, uh, at Arica. Yeah. And now Amori with a win at South Coast Crusade and a win here. Amori Laverne wants to get your champion. Jeff Hubbard in second place. So Jeff is actually uh, in third place in the points title of 4,660 points. So congratulations to Amori and his fiance at home and their baby wow. that's on the way. That's some more money to raise the baby. Another $6,000 and 2,000 points coming for Amore Laverne. Awesome, awesome event. Uh, Jeff really never found the ways, never got anything bigger than a uh, 7.13, so he didn't quite pull the gigantic scores we know he can, but some great riding nonetheless by all of these guys. Yeah, they're gonna be stoked, you know. Yeah, yeah Jeff's, Jeff's right up there. Still, he's still within striking distance, and uh, that's pretty much the most amazing thing that can happen, I think, is that, uh, is that um, yeah, there's a tie now for first place on the RBA World Tour. Um, Man, Amore's pumped. I don't know if he's he crying. Is he, he's just so happy. He's looks like he's overwhelmed with yeah. emotion. I hope he's crying. That, that's that's what we want to see. You know, we want to see the emotion. Yeah, the man from uh, Reunion Island and now living in Canaries, like you said, he's so pumped. Oh, he can't even write. He just wants to go straight. Yeah, he's given everything for it. You know, there's someone like a faithful supporter there, just giving him the, giving him the the double arm raise. And man. The locals here, Itaco Chad, are, are just got to be bummed. No Brazilians made it to the finals. We saw Dudu in the semis as yeah. well as Nicholas Bastos, but they could not get past the world champions, Jeff Hubbard and Amore Laverne. But man, wow. big congratulations. There we go. Amore pumped. There is the champ himself. You know, he's been getting congratulated there by all the local crowd. I see Ibrahim Idushi down there, the, the Moroccan. Alex Uranga, his, his teammate and, and housemate. And, Awesome. Man. <laughs> they got a beer for him already. Yeah, he's got a beer. He's got a carry. He's, he's in top of the world right now, man. That's such an amazing feeling. And well done, Moz. Well done, bro. Good for Amore Laverne. Happy to see him. Give him the thumbs up. He's pumped. That is incredible. The Itaca Chata Pro presented by Pride Bodyboards as well as Net and Kimona Surf Shop is over. The fourth stop of the GoPro IBA World Tour is done. And again, Ben Player is tied in the lead with Amore Laverne. Jeff Hubbard is coming third at the moment with 4,660 points. So a tie for the IBA points lead. That's insane. Yeah, that's insane. I'm frothing on that, Eric. It's going to be amazing. And um, so, I mean, there's Amore still walking up. getting he's, he's getting escorted by security now. They need him to get out there pretty fast. I think he's everyone's up there waiting for him, waiting to congratulate the champ. <laughs> for sure. Oh wow, man, that is amazing, and that, yeah, like you said, points. Uh, there's a tie for the point seed in the RBA World Tour. That's uh, that's incredible stuff. You know, that's the most exciting race we've had in a few years, I think. I mean, it's Jeff Hubbard only 340 points back. Yeah. Yeah, there's not much in it. You know, there's not much in it, and there's a lot on the line for these guys that do in fact take over the world title. You know, in royalties and in incentives, and uh, just the the. The IBA World title is the most pre prestigious title in bodyboarding, and this is what everyone wants. Seth Carter says thanks to Jared, Eric, Dallas, the rest of IBA crew, Live Pete. Sick event, sick final. Thank you, Seth. We're glad you appreciate it. We're doing the best we can here at IBA World Tour, bringing you some of the best bodyboarding in the world that we can. Look at him. Look at the champ. He's got a majestic man in the background. <laughs> 